Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, uh, I should do an oil change to my Forerunner, so I figured, why not make a video about it? <laughs> Here goes. You always want to start off with your vehicle on a flat and level surface. All right, and here's everything that I use to do this job. Obviously, plenty of rubber gloves because we care about our skin and don't want a whole bunch of oil on it. Um, a funnel. This is a special one that threads right in. It's the same thread pitch as that oil cap. Threads right into the valve cover. Um, here we have the oil that I chose. This is not my favorite oil. This is not my first pick. However, I needed my oil changed, and the oil that I use typically is out of stock. So this is fine. Um, a drain plug gasket. This is the Toyota factory drain plug gasket, and obviously plenty of rags. We have our genuine Toyota oil filter some brake parts cleaner and this oh my god is so helpful for this video this is a magnetic so I'm sticking it all over the bottom of my truck in various locations to make filming easy for me flashlight that has various modes and also this top mode as well amazing um, I am using power tools to take off my skid plate however only use power tools if you feel like you're not going to over torque things, which is probably everybody. Um, and I know that if I tell you to just use a ratchet, you're not going to anyways. Um, I have my large ratchet. And the only reason that I love this is because underneath you just, you know, sometimes they're struggling with a little bit of torque on my 14 millimeter socket with a small extension. And then of course a torque wrench. Um, I also have my 3 8 inch drive for my 12 millimeter socket that I'm going to be using to take off my skid plate bolts. Now here are the factory skid plate bolts. However, I have had uh, a few that I've lost over time. I replaced them with some ARPs. These are 10 millimeter. So I don't know, I'm using a 10 millimeter in this video as well. However, you do not have to most likely if you're lucky enough to have all of your factory bolts. And last but not least over here, we have the ever important cardboard. <laughs> so you don't make a mess. And of course, a lovely drain pan. This one I happen to love because it contains everything in it. And then I can just, you know, look at this lovely little vent. And as long as the vent is shut, this is shut. And of course, this top piece is shut where I'm going to actually drain the oil from into my containers. I can just pick it up and go. All right, so before we actually start draining the oil, the first thing I'm gonna do is check the engine oil level. Actually make sure that there is a good amount on the dipstick that I'm not burning any in between my last service and I have not added any. So this is exactly what I wanna see. It's all the way full. This is a great sign. After I'm done checking the engine oil level, I will put the dipstick back in. However, I will not put it all the way in. I'll let it just settle where it may and sort of leave the dipstick up, kind of like a little flag, sort of like a visual alert to anyone passing by, like, hey, you know, there's no oil in here, or at least they've got to like think about it when they see that. Oof. You can definitely tell if that seal is starting to go bad. It is. <laughs> there's supposed to be a seal in there. It is very, very hard. Next, I'm going to pull off the oil cap. And in this case, I can see that I've got actually quite a significant leak um, around my engine oil cap and uh, this seal does not look great uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this cap right on my hood latch and I'm gonna put my rag over the opening for the oil cap that's because I don't want anything to fall in there especially because I'm doing this job outside it would just be really lousy if you know a piece of debris or a leaf or even I don't know um, a small animal crawled in there <laughs> in there. Uh, I just want to want to block it off to anything. And then also the reason why I put this here is because I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people forget to put the oil cap back on. So if I go to close the hood right now, say I get distracted by someone else in the shop or I get distracted by one of my chickens or something, I go to close the hood and the worst thing that's going to happen is I break this cap. I'm not going to go on, you know, a road trip to Houston and blow up my engine halfway there because I've lost all the oil out the top, right? So, all right. So now I've got that under control. I'm going to go ahead and start draining my engine oil. Cue the cardboard. All right, now sliding underneath the vehicle, thanks to my little magnetic gear wrench light here, we can see how easy everything is to get to. We've got the drain plug going on right there in that hole. And over here, we've got the engine oil filter right up in there. So I really don't even have to take these couple of skid plates down. Um, I will do that in a second just to show you. And then we're going to do a visual inspection of everything underneath the car. So uh, let's get started. We're going to get our 14 millimeter socket and we're going to loosen that drain plug and we're going to let this oil drain for as long as possible. 
also I understand that in a dealership environment, you're not going to take as long as possible to drain out all of the oil. So in this case, we want the engine oil to be what we drain first, and then all of our other inspections, you know, checking tire tread, checking tire pressure, rotating the tires, any undercarriage inspection, anything else that we're going to be doing while we're underneath the car or while the vehicle's up in the air, we're going to do and save like putting that drain plug in to the very last second. So with my 14 millimeter socket, so we'll loosen that drain plug. Look how nice and loose that was. <laughs> Not too tight. Everyone always over tightens on this because I think I was the last one to do this job. Heck yeah. Okay, and even though this crush washer looks fine, we're going to obviously replace it every single time. This is a fiber gasket, but it also has a steel layer in between, so it is still a crush washer. And I have noticed that if you try to use something else, like, you know, there are a whole bunch of different styles of crush washer. Let, let's see. So here's an aluminum one, a copper one. Oh, here's one for a sob. It's got like a little rubber ring and like a metal, I don't even know what sort of metal that is on the outside. Um, if I ever use something that's not the factory washer, it just always leaks. So uh, just not worth it. This is one for the Supra, that's a big one. <laughs> and here is the factory style Toyota Crush Washer. And actually this outer layer here, this blue, is actually like part of the gasket material itself. And you'll notice that if you go to reuse it, um, this blue layer will peel off and it's just not gonna seal as well, so. All right, so now that there's barely any oil coming out of there anymore, we just got like a few more drips. I'm gonna go ahead and put this drain plug back in. I'm just gonna give a little wipe first. <laughs> And then we'll go ahead and put that back in and torque it to specification. Always install it by hand first. All right, so now that my drain plug is installed and torqued, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the oil filter, which is all the way up there. And like I mentioned before, you actually don't have to pull these down, the skid plates, in order to get to the oil filter. However, I'm going to, because I'm gonna do a thorough inspection today. So now, normally, you're gonna have the same size bolts on both the front and the rear, these little 12 millimeter bolts. However, quite often, you'll find that these bolts are missing, um, or in my case, I've replaced quite a few because, well, they were missing to begin with, and one of them was stripped. Quite often you'll see people removing and installing these in the dealership or in the quick lube with power tools and um, it's very easy to strip them and the bolt is actually a little bit weaker than the housing that they're in so quite often you'll end up stripping the bolts. <laughs> so uh, there's normally not all of them, there's a few missing. Now also I will notice that I've got this little bracket that is bent. Usually these two pieces are attached together so you can actually take them down as a unit. Um, in this case actually I found that sometimes I want to remove just the back or just the front and uh, so I never bothered to fix that, <laughs> um, I just left it. So I'm gonna be removing both. So in the rear, I only have two bolts that are exclusive to the rear. There's this one right here and over here, I have this bolt right there. And then these two right here, we've got one inside this area, another one right here that connect both the front and rear skid plate together. Then in the front skid plate, you will see these three in the front, which are probably the most obvious. And then you've got a couple little hidden ones right up in here. There we go, there's a setting. You can point up there and you can see. Yep, way up there there's one. And then over here is the other one. All right. And that's pretty cool actually, there's hooks on this. So if I wanted to just like drop it down, it would hang. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull it all the way out. I want to do a nice undercarriage inspection. All right, so now that the undercarriage liner is off, we can actually do our undercarriage inspection, uh, or the skid plates, rather. Um, and like I said before, not super necessary for changing the oil filter, but look how much easier it is to get to now. Um, so if you're in a shop, you probably want to take it down and, you know, actually do an inspection. If you're in a quick loop, no, dragonfly. Oh, sad. If you're in a quick loop place, you're probably not going to take this down. So right now looking, I can see that I've got a little bit of a rear main seal seep perhaps, but do you see how this could also potentially be caused by just being messy on the oil filter? So if the oil filter leaks, which as soon as I take this down, you're gonna see that the oil will come down and it'll start to leak along this pan seal here, and that will actually cause it to look like there is an oil pan gasket seep. I, I happen to know I do have a little bit of an oil pan gasket seep and a slight rear main seal seep, but is the oil filter making a little bit of a mess and contributing to that? Very, very, very likely. So I'm not gonna do anything about any of these leaks right now. It's just not worth it. Um, another thing I'm noticing though is, wow, that boot is 
awful. Actually, not only is does it look gross and is it completely soaked, but it's actually ripped. It's completely torn. Ugh. And having torn boots is the number one killer of steering racks or, you know, making steering racks leak because, you know, there's a tiny seal inside of here. And if it's not perfectly clean, any sort of road debris or dirt can actually tear that seal every time you turn your steering wheel. So... I'm definitely, definitely gonna wanna dress that boot and I probably need to reseal my steering rack. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, look how bad that is. Oh my gosh. All right, so this is why we do an undercarriage inspection, y'all. <laughs> All right, well, I've got a lot more to inspect right now, but this is just an oil change video, so get some light on there. And if I did a good job last time, this should, oh yeah, nice and loose. Do you see how easy that was to turn by hand? Now, it is not leaking. So I know what you're thinking. Oh, that was so easy to turn by hand. That's why it's... No, no, no. Do you see how up here this is actually dry? This part up here is dry. We've got wetness down here. Now, that could have just been from undoing it last time and um, and having oil like seep down along this. But what I'm going to do actually is after I replace this, I'm going to clean this off really, really, really well. So I'll be able to tell how much of this is actually new seep versus old seep. I was not the last one to do this oil change, actually. Um, so I will, I will give credit where credit is due. Um, Megan was the last one to do this oil change, and she did a killer job with torquing everything thing to great specifications. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that now and loosen it. Let all the oil drain down into the pan. So see, this is what I mean. When that oil starts to come down, then it's going to drip along this here and will make it look like there's a leak when maybe there isn't. Now I'm not saying there's not a leak, but there just might not be a leak. I mean, I know there's a seep, but what I mean is that it's actually might not be as bad as I think that it is. All right, let's get that out of the way and let's get our new filter on. Whenever I take off an old oil filter, I will put them together and lube them. And that's a chance for me to look at the old one. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen this little gasket get stuck behind on the vehicle and you go to put the new one on and then you've got two O-rings and uh, that will not form a good seal. The pressure will override that and uh, you will have a terrible leak there. So I'll always just put my eyes and make a visual inspection on the old filter um, before I put the new filter on because of this design. So sounds like we've stopped leaking, so I'm going to go ahead and install this. All right, so now that I have my new oil filter on and my drain plug is torqued to specification, um, now it's time for me to use this amazing, amazing funnel. This is like the best invention on earth. Um, and to do that, I'm just gonna pop out these guys just to make it a little bit easier for me to make sure that my funnel has like a direct thread on. Perfect, so I'm not just like sort of pushing against these. And as you can see, this funnel threads directly on is the same thread pitch as my oil cap brilliant design, right? And I happen to know that this takes 6.1 quarts, so I'm just going to go ahead and dump this first gallon in. Now, this is not the oil that I normally use. However, the oil that I normally use is out of stock and seems to be out of stock indefinitely, so I'm going to have to choose a plan B. But in the meantime, we're just going to go for this. All right, before I put too much in there, I'm just going to check the level on the dipstick. And what I want to see is exactly what I've got. And this is kind of hard to see because the color of the oil is so light. So you can see a little bit of dirty oil from just like the residual that was left in the dipstick tube. But I'm not sure if you can see how the level that I'm at right now of the clean oil is just above the full mark. So I'm imagining that there's going to be a whole bunch of oil that's going to be taken up by the new oil filter, which is empty right now, and everything in the engine itself. You know, there's a bunch of oil ports all throughout the cylinder head and all throughout the block. So right now, all I'm pouring is directly into the pan. So for my initial pour, I want a little bit higher than the full mark on the dipstick. So now I'm going to go ahead and start the engine and actually get a good reading of where we're at. So I'm gonna put that dipstick all the way in. I'm gonna pull out my oil funnel, make sure I don't drip anything. And let's fire up. I'm gonna run it until that oil light is out. Once that oil light is off, go ahead and shut it down. All right, so I'm giving that oil a chance to drain back down into the pan. I'm just gonna do a quick look over and double check and just make sure that there's no leaking around my oil filter housing here. And look how lovely that looks. Oil filter looks great. The drain plug looks freaking fantastic. No leaks around that gasket at all. So we're good to go. All right, let's go check the oil level. Oh my God, did I nail it the first time? <laughs> Professional love right there, y'all. <laughs> Just kidding. But there we go. You can see that the oil level is absolutely perfect. Um, and actually, fun fact while we're here is that on most dipsticks, not all, but most, um, the difference between the full 
and the add line or the full and the low is about one quart. So if you're ever looking at your dipstick and you're, you know, you're trying to figure out just how much oil it has consumed between oil changes, that's a, that's a pretty good measure. So quite often I'll take a picture of the dipstick from my customers if they have any oil consumption so I can have a reference for the next time that we do an oil change. But in this case, I started out with a full dipstick. I'm going to finish with a full dipstick. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and put that back in. And um, all right, I'm just going to put these back into place. Cable there, this little vacuum hose here. Make sure that's nice and tight. And... Now, all I gotta do is put my skid plate back on. All right, so now that my oil change is complete and I've verified that there's no leaks under there, I'm gonna uh, clean up my mess and actually put my skid plates back on. Now, in this case, I'm actually only gonna put my front one on for now because I'm gonna leave the rear one off to give myself a little bit more access to get to my steering rack. Um, I'm gonna have to address that, actually. I think that boot is so bad that at the minimum, I'm gonna have to replace it. At the maximum, I'm gonna have to rebuild or reseal my steering rack, which I really do not want to do. <laughs> I may just put a band-aid on it and put a boot on it for now, but I don't know, what am I gonna do? You're gonna have to wait for a future video to find out the answer to that. In the meantime, I'm gonna get this on. But like I was mentioning earlier, this is super cool. Because you just place those little parts right up in there like so, and it basically holds it into place for you. I'm putting them all in super loose at first because it is so easy to like over tighten them and then make it really difficult for you to get any of the other ones in. So just go around and tighten all of them after they're all in and they're all seated. All right. Now that we're done, last but not least, we're gonna note the mileage and write it down and write our sticker off of that. So yes, that's my actual mileage of 306,781. And I'm gonna write my sticker for 3,000 miles. So 309,781 is gonna be my next oil change interval. All right, so now that we're done with our oil change, we've got all this dirty oil. What do we do with it? So what I do is I collect it in a container like this. As you saw, my drain pan is just like really awesome for collecting oil. And it also makes it super easy to pour it into a container. Now, luckily for me in my neighborhood I'm able to put these into clear containers and the city does recycle them however you can also bring these used jugs of oil back to wherever you got the oil from initially so if that's an O'Reilly's auto parts or an AutoZone or a Napa um, most of them do take used oil also my local oil change place think about a take five or a valve or something like that will also take and recycle your used oil as well um, they just have a limit on how many gallons of yours they'll take in a day and I think our local limit is 15 gallons so um, I always like to save this is like a used washer fluid bottle but it has like a really tight cap so I'm not just gonna you know spew it out and while I'm just driving down the street to drop it off so I happen to love saving these just don't like use a milk jug or something where the top will just pop off over nothing because then your car is gonna smell terribly so um, yeah I always like to save these and I know I'm gonna do my own oil change but um, all right yeah cool so that solves that problem Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, fantastic. Then it was worth the double time that it took to do this job uh, because it always takes longer when I film it. So I hope you appreciate it, people. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Here, Thalia. Here, Luna. Luna, you see? Okay.